Last year, in 2023, I played a lot of AAA games. Although my favorite game last year is technically an indie game, Baldur's Gate 3 is obviously AAA. Resident Evil 4, Alan Wake 2, Final Fantasy, Mortal Kombat are all games that I played and beat last year. This year, though, has been a bit different. Although I finished a few commercial games, played catch up with games that I started but didn't finish, I've played a bunch of indie games and some classics. But specifically with indie games, I've played a bunch of demakes. Now, technically, a demake is classified as a game that is fairly new, that's demade with old graphics. So, what do I call Alyssa? Old school survival horror? What about Bolt Gun? That's easy. That's a boomer shooter. So, what do I call El Paso Elsewhere? Boomer action retro Max Payne like third person shooter? I don't know. But what I do know is that El Paso Elsewhere is a game that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. It's one of those. At least for me. See, Alyssa made me feel nostalgic. The intro in the very beginning of Alyssa is very PlayStation 1 esque, and immediately after seeing it, I felt something in the feels. I felt it. So much so that immediately after playing Alyssa, I started to play the original Resident Evil. Now I've beaten a few Resident Evils in my time, but I'm ashamed to say this was the first time I actually finished it. Shortly afterwards, I replayed Code Veronica and bought a bunch of old shit. But why? You see, I think something happened when I played Alyssa. I started to miss the times that existed when I played those type of games. See, despite my youthful face, I guess, I'm actually pushing 40. Next year, in fact. I actually thought I was turning 39 next year, but I was wrong. I turned 39 this year, and I'm not happy about it. But I digress. Where was I? Right. So when I heard about El Paso Elsewhere, it was immediately compared to Max Payne and its obvious inspiration. It's not just the graphics or the bullet times either. You literally, like Max Payne, take pills to fix your health. So call it nostalgia or whatever, but when I heard about El Paso Elsewhere, I immediately wanted and I knew I was going to play that game one day. And holy shit, is this a video ass video game. El Paso Elsewhere was developed by Strange Scaffold, an indie studio responsible for making games like Space Warlord Organ Trader Simulator and Airport for Aliens currently run by dogs. It's described on Steam as a third-person love letter to classic shooters and it was released on September 23rd last year for PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. In April of this year, a film adaptation was announced and set to be produced by D. Bonaventure Pictures, the production company behind the Transformer movies. You play as James Savage, an addict trying to stop his ex-girlfriend, Dracula, from destroying the world. It takes place in a hotel that's stuck in a void made by his ex and filled with mythical creatures like werewolves and these Nosferatu-looking motherfuckers. You go floor by floor, saving hostages and mowing these monsters down, monologuing and getting story bits between floors. Occasionally, you get more of an understanding of what's going on throughout the levels with film reels and answering machines, but most of the story comes from cutscenes between floors. I ran the game on a Lenovo Legion Slim 5 laptop on max settings and I didn't have much issues. Occasionally I would see a monster just standing there, but that didn't happen too often. The controls are simple enough, especially if you've played a Max Payne game before. You shoot, heal, switch through weapons, reload, dodge, stab with a stake. Not that type of stake. The stabby kind. Yeah, that's it. And bullet time. And that's it. Simple. There's four difficulty settings you can play in the game. Pretty self-explanatory. Story focuses on story. Intended is the intended way the developers wanted it to play out. And challenging makes it harder. You can customize various things like infinite ammo, damage multipliers, how much stakes you have. This will change the settings to custom. If you change the difficulty settings to custom, it doesn't affect your achievements either. This ensures you can play the game you want without having to worry about if you're going to get it or not. I played it unintended and it was still pretty easy. It doesn't mean I didn't die though. You're pretty squishy. 
but so are the monsters. And at the time of writing, I have about 17 hours of playtime, but I think I beat it like in 14 hours. I paused the game and walked away for like tens of minutes more than a few times. So it's hard to say how long it took me to actually beat it. How long to beat.com has it clocked in at seven and a half hours, 10 and a half for completionist. My expectations for this game was pretty decent. I mean, I figured I would have a decent time at the very least, and at the most, it would be a game I want to tell my friends about. What I didn't expect was to have an emotional investment the way I did. The game starts with James in a very neo-norm monologue. He's about to go all in and stop his ex-girlfriend. He's fucked up, emotionally, physically, and mentally. Just coming off a of bender, he knew, as he would put it, that this was it for him. He was not going to leave this hotel alive. He either would die or would have to kill his ex-girlfriend that he clearly still loves. Either action was going to destroy him as he enters the void within the hotel. He's been made aware that this is clearly different than anything else he's ever dealt with before. He mentions in his monologue that his specialty was folklore, dealing with golems and leprechauns, but nothing quite like this. Not just because he's going to stop his ex-girlfriend, but literally the entire reality he's known has changed around him. Shit is trippy. There's no ceiling, just a void. There's doors all over the place, mismatched hallways. It was an acid trip on steroids. Part of the game is saving hostages in almost every floor. Dracula is responsible for this. In any context, she's evil. But as the game progresses, you get bits and pieces of their relationship. And not only does she seem reasonable, but she seems like a fun person. What if I was a ghoul? And I'd still like you. What if I was a beetle? I'd still like you. What if I was a vampire? A genuine person. So how could this fun, genuine person be responsible for so much evil? I wanted to know more. I was invested. I don't want to give any more of the story away, but I will say this. As the layers are peeled, more things become apparent and start to make sense. Despite the concept of a monster hunter going after his ex-girlfriend who happens to be Dracula, excuse me, Dracula, I was surprised to see how relatable this man was. Not just with the internal struggles he dealt with, but with the pain of dealing with a lost relationship, as if he was going to his ex-girlfriend's house to pick up the last of his shit and say his final goodbye. For better or worse, he was going to receive his closure, but going into it, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. This was a one-way trip. The game is beautiful, elegant, trippy, and heartbreaking. The soundtrack is amazing, not just in the way it enhances the storytelling, but also the combat. It makes you feel like a badass. It was composed by RJ Lake with vocals by Lake Savage. He shared his thoughts on the creation of the music in El Paso Elsewhere, and he said that he and Zalavander Nelson Jr., his name is actually pronounced Zalavir, I, I said it wrong, the creative director and founder of Strange Scatfold, after some back and forth agreed that El Paso Elsewhere had to be a rap record as much as it had to be a game. I left a link to RJ Lake's YouTube, which has his music from El Paso Elsewhere at the bottom. As I mentioned before, part of your goal is to save hostages, and when you do, you'll be greeted with some cheeky line like, Suck that, vampires. But one thing I noticed that the hostages occasionally say, Who's going to save you? I didn't give it much thought at first, but as the game progressed, it became clear to me that the game was trying to tell me something. This wasn't just a man killing vampires and werewolves. This was a man on a road to destruction, self-destruction, and we're all taking a trip with him. And that trip, as heartbreaking as it is, it's a one-way trip and I'm grateful to be along for the ride.